Hi, I'm Stefan. Welcome to Revival Cycles. This is a tech talk uh, where we talk about some of the products that we use on our custom builds so that we can explain how they work and you can learn how to use them on your custom builds. Today we're talking about the Moto Gadget M unit. This is the box the M unit comes in and inside you'll find an M unit, some mounting hardware and a battery cable and some instructions. The instructions are actually very complete and if you read through this entire manual you'll have a very solid understanding of how this system works. But if you do run into trouble on your application, we're always here, just a phone call or an email and we can help you sort out whatever issue you've run into. So the M unit. This is a power distribution and control module for your motorcycle. It's got a built-in starter relay, it's got a built-in turn signal flasher relay, it's got a built-in headlight cutout relay, it also serves as a fuse block replacement, it's got an alarm function that if your key is turned off and someone moves your bike, the headlight, the horn, and the turn signals will start going off. Uh, it's water and vibration resistant, it's 100% solid state so there are no moving parts or contacts that could burn out, and it is 6, and tw six to 24 volt compatible, so no matter what type of electrical system you're running on your bike, this will actually work without any issues. Um, that's pretty much the basic rundown on the features that this module has. So with that, I think we should probably just go ahead and wire one up and I'll show you how to do it. All right, so let's wire up an M unit. We've got our M unit. Now we're going to need to power it. So let's use a battery and let's get some other things you usually have on a motorcycle, like a headlight and a tail light. <clears throat> so, let's see, we should probably have a turn signal. And then we're going to need a few little odds and ends to actually control this. So we need a key to turn the whole system on and off. We're going to need some handlebar controls so you can turn your headlight and your turn signals on and off. How about a brake light switch and a configuration button so I can show you how to configure the M unit. Now the M unit is really handy in that they break up the inputs and the outputs onto two different sides. So all the inputs are on this side, all the outputs are on this side. We're going to feed main power in through this terminal here and then all of the outputs for the entire motorcycle are powered off of this rail. All of the inputs on the other hand come in on this side and we'll be setting that up directly. So first things first, let's get some power run to the M unit and get this connected. Go back to our hardware bag that came in the box and in here we've got just the right screw to connect to the M unit. As with any electrical wiring, it's important to have secure connections, otherwise your system will not work correctly. So um, now that we've got power run to the M unit, we need to be able to turn it on and off. For that, we're going to use a keyed ignition switch, and that gets plugged into the lock input. And then all you have to do is tighten that terminal. These are basic screw terminals, so it makes the system replaceable. If you decide to start a new project, you can remove your M unit and install it in the new project without having to cut wires. You just pull everything apart, move it to the next bike, and hook it all back up again. The lock input is looking for a plus 12 signal, plus 12 volt signal. Um, so we're going to run that over to the positive terminal. Of course, I'm doing this in a very haphazard fashion because this is just a quick demonstration on the bench. If you're wiring your motorcycle, you want to take a little more care to make your terminals neater than I am. So now we've got power to the M unit. We're also going to need a ground. Because this is just a demonstration, I'm going to use an alligator clip ground. In your install, it's important that you have a very good ground to your chassis. Now, if we turn this 
turn the system on, you'll see the lights race around and then the lock input is lit and the auxiliary output is lit. So we know the system's actually working. We can move forward with wiring in some controls. So why don't we start with the brake light switch, which is right here. This gets installed into the brake light input. And again, just screw that terminal down. Let's add a headlight switch. I'm going to use this blue wire here, which is run to the bar controls. Then let's add the turn signal button. That's this yellow wire. That's going to run to the left hand turn signal input. Screw that guy down. <clears throat> and then we're going to need a configuration button. So that configuration button is on the red terminal. Now for all of the inputs except for the lock, we're looking for a ground signal um, and for that, what we'll do is just kind of tie all of these black wires together. Just give a quick twist on these. Maybe worth mentioning for those of you with the uh, Positive Earth British bikes, you may want to give us a call just so that you can get that set up correctly. I'm also going to tie in the grounds for our outputs because with most motorcycle wiring, uh, you use the same ground through the chassis as you ordinarily would and that means it's a single point for all of the ground wires. Single point in terms of electrical nodes. All right. So this little jumble of wires is going to make this whole system work. All right, so now we've got all of that system grounded. Move this just a little bit so you can make the wires reach. Let's go ahead and connect our brake light to the output side. So that just goes in. Tighten the screw terminal. Then let's get our turn signal wired in. Again, we're running on the left hand turn signal input, so we want to connect to the left hand turn signal output. All of these inputs and outputs are very conveniently labeled and etched into the top of the M unit. All right, uh, we've got a headlight left. So there are two outputs for the headlight because you've got a high beam and a low beam. So we'll connect the low beam first. And find our high beam wire right here. And there we go, we've got our high beam wire connected. <clears throat> and with that, you've actually just watched me wire the better part of a complete motorcycle. So let's see if this actually works. So turn your key on. Now we saw the lights race around and now the auxiliary is out. The auxiliary output is where you would connect your ignition system and potentially if you've got a field excited charging system that wire would also be powered through the auxiliary output. Since we don't have an ignition system here and this is just a demonstration, nothing has really happened other than the M unit has turned on. So first things first, we will turn on the headlight. So to do that I'm going to use the button that's connected to the blue wire and just give it a quick tap. Headlight turns on. Now if I want to switch to high beam, press it just for a brief moment and it turns to high beam. Now if for any reason I wanted to turn it off, I can turn it off. So um, now we can also check to see how our 
turn signal is working and press the yellow wire button and turn signal is working perfectly normal. So another option that we can do is we can go through and change the turn signal flashers and that's in menu option 7. Um, we can switch that to an M wave which is a smooth fade in and fade out versus the harsh on off that you get from a typical turn, turn signal flasher. So as we turn the system on and while the lights are racing around on the outside you want to push your configuration button. We catch the configuration, move down to menu option 7 and switch to M-Wave. All right, now we're back to normal operation. And when I turn the turn signals on, you can see how it fades in, fades out, fades in, fades out. And again, I can just go back into the configuration and change that back if I don't like it. Right now, we're set up with the brake light connected to this little limit switch, which is pretty similar to what you would have for a normal brake light. Now, if I actually actuate the switch, brake lights come on. We have a single LED unit here, and that would be similar to a single filament incandescent bulb. And right now, when we turn the headlight on, the brake light doesn't come on. What we can do is actually configure this so that it will come on. And I'll show you how to configure the M unit so that we have a, what's called a one-wire taillight solution that incorporates a taillight and a brake light into a single filament LED or incandescent bulb. To do that, we need to turn the system back off. And menu two is the rear light configuration. And we want menu option B because that's the one wire rear light and brake light and it's set up for LED. So to go to menu option B, just a quick tap moves us to menu option two and then press and hold, sets us over to the other side. Now we're in menu option A. One press puts us to menu option B. Now press and hold, brings us back to the menu numbers. And we could cycle through the rest, but just to show you what we just changed, I'm going to go ahead and hold this until the, men until the M unit resumes normal operation. <clears throat> so we'll turn it off, turn it back on. And now when we turn our headlight on, we see that the brake light, or sorry, excuse me, we see that the tail light is on. Now if we turn the brake light on, you can see there's an intensity change. This has gotten brighter. So now with a single filament bulb, no additional resistors, we're able to get both tail light and brake light function from the same emitter. And it's really just as simple as going through and changing a few configurations on the M unit. All right, so earlier in the video we talked about the M unit being a replacement for your fuse block. And I would like to demonstrate exactly how that works. This probably falls under the category of don't try this at home kids because we're going to take a wire and add it into the headlight circuit. I'm just going to add this in on the headlight low beam output. Just loosen that screw terminal and add that wire. Go ahead and strip this end so we've got plenty showing. Now, when we turn the system on, we get our usual race around and then it turns on the auxiliary output. I'm going to turn on the headlight input. So now the headlight is actually on and running on the low beam. I'm going to give this a direct short to battery ground. This would simulate basically the worst possible short you could have on your motorcycle. May see a few sparks, but we will see the headlight turn off. And now the LED on the M unit is flashing, indicating that there is a fault on the headlight circuit. Note the brake is still, or the tail light is still on, the brake light still functions. Our turn signal is still good, and I don't smell any burning. This wire is not getting hot, so if we remove it and cycle the headlight, comes right back on. High beam works. Turn it back off, and just for fun, let's do that one more time. So here come the sparks. Goes out. 
Turn it right back on, no problem. So that concludes the demonstration and wiring of the Moto Gadget M unit. And if you do have any questions, concerns, comments, um, or installation uh, assistance that you need, give us a call, send us an email, we're always here. And you can also take a look at all the other amazing Moto Gadget stuff that's on our website. Honestly, the M unit is really just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot of fantastic products that are available for your custom motorcycle. Again, check us out at revivalcycles.com, and thanks for watching.